All right, let's get into a portion of the show that I think is going to help some newer collectors, some some people who are interested in moving their comic books, maybe beyond some of the traditional routes, okay? We're talking six ways to sell your expensive paper. All right, let's get into it right here, right now. We have six traditional ways, but they're all emerging in changing over time. A lot of these are evolving. And we would even talk about some of these platforms back in the day. And now we're bringing them back on the mic, talking about them in a different way because sellers have figured out a new way to utilize them, to grow their communities and to offer a way to have their customers buy from them with confidence. That's a big part of this. Integrity, right? We already chatted about that today. You have to provide your buyer the ability to get the comic that they're purchasing in a way that they feel like it's going to be safe to do, that they're not going to regret it after the fact. And that way, they want to buy from you again and again. And it's that repetition, that building of a community that is like the foundation of comic stores in their entirety, you know, dealers, circles, and their network. So the first one on our list today if you were hit with the challenge of, I want to move my comics, okay? And, we're, and these are all different situations. You know, I, I would recommend different platforms based off of your particular case, you know, whether you have a collection, whether you have one book, and it really is going to determine how much work you want to put into it and which route you're going to go. So the first one here is a store. We're talking about an LCS. Taking your comics to a store is always an option to move your comics. However, it will likely be one of the ways that you will get the least amount potentially for your comic book. And I think that that is something that members need to understand a bit better. Yeah, I'm with you on this pretty aggressive. Well, yeah, I guess pretty aggressively. I mean, I 100% agree with you. Going the store route for me would be the least, most likely, unless you have a really great with your relationship with your store. If I walk into a store and they're going to tell me it's going to take, they're going to take 40% plus of the book and they're going to give me the spiel of, oh, I'm taking up floor space and I got to pay rent. Man, I'm walking my butt right out of there. I do not want to deal with you. I do not trust you enough. And you're just giving me a line. And then sometimes people don't know better and they accept that. Like, oh, he's right. I am taking up floor space. You know what? What If you're bringing in stuff that they're going to put on their show floor, um, I promise you it's probably better than the stuff they already have there. Because a lot of the inventory I see at a lot of stores usually isn't that fantastic. And they're just putting up stuff on their walls. So if you have a good collection of books, if you know you have value in your books, you need to find your best option. And that generally isn't your local store. And again, unless you have a good relationship and they will take maybe 10 to 15 percent, then maybe that helps. Okay, because A, the money stays close, it's local, it's local pickups. That's a possibility. But don't sell yourself short if you know you have value in your books. And right now, a lot of us have value in our books, especially if you're finding collections that have been either you've been collecting for a long time or passed down through generations. Interesting. So, you know, I I agree with you to a certain extent. I think that there are members that um, if they don't look up their books and have any idea of the value that they have and they're trusting an LCS to get them the top dollar they can get for their collection and hoping that there's some honesty built there. If there isn't a relationship, get a second opinion. Don't take the first offer. And I would tell you that flat across the board, right? However, there is an aspect of most comic books are not worth something. There's a lot of collections that are filled with books that are only going to sell for a dollar. And if you're bringing long box after long box in and you've been told multiple times at multiple stores that there's nothing, there's no major keys, the book in here that's worth the most money is $10, most of those stores are going to be like, here, take, keep the $10 book. I just will just buy the rest of these for, you know. Uh, a rate of closer to what you just described, like half of what they can make for it. And I think that the point to be made here is that you are getting something out of moving the collection at a store, which is zero work. You're bringing it in, traditionally getting a level of assessment for free, and 
the ability to walk away with cash a lot of the time or store credit or something like that. So I think if you are in a position where you don't want to put any work into it, you need the money and you want to be done. You don't want to go down any route and put any more time into something like this. Yes, a storefront is a good opportunity and it's a great one to try to get some assessment and possibly some help because there's also alternatives to just selling straight up to a store. I think that's really good to put a little baseline of what we're talking about here. That makes total sense. Like, again, if you have a collection and you're not sure of its value, you don't know anything about it, you definitely need to go get multiple opinions, three, four opinions, okay? If you do not do that, okay, you're asking to have the advantage, someone taking advantage of you, okay? That is what you're asking for. You need to do a little bit due diligence, which is going shopping around, asking people, all right? If you realize, like you said, that there isn't much value there, then absolutely, man, unload it locally because to unload it any other way is so difficult. Well, the next one on our list here is consignments. That one right there is an alternative that you can still do through a store. There are dealers that do this professionally where they take a lot of inventory from peers and individuals that they meet, that they get recommendations from, take a small percentage and then do the work for you. And that's going to be traditionally right between the cost of what you'd lose for just selling the collection its entirety to like an average store where they have to make their money on it as well and, you know, and deal with the inventory. So they're going to take less and maybe an auction site where you're paying 20% plus all of the cost and the time that you would spend in having to grade price ship and all that stuff. I think I got a little bit mixed up here with the store and the consignment. So let's say we do consignment with a, a store. Sure. Right? So or a person. It. You know, so it could be a store, okay. could be a person. A person is, so if you're going to do consignment with a store person, again, it just depends on the value. So if you have value there, make sure not to sell yourself short with good quality stuff for too high of a percentage because stuff will sell and move. But again, if, it's, if you don't want to put the work in, then that's okay. But if you want to put the work in, the best way to maximize your money is going to be you doing the work. So that's the best way to do it. So if you don't want to do that, there's options here on this list. If yeah. you want to do that, there's options here on this list too. So consignment, that's a great easy way. You drop off the books, you give them to somebody local, you know, maybe it's a business so you trust them and that's great. But just don't sell yourself too short on percentages potentially because that's usually where everything is going to get you. It's going to be that percentage. I recommend keeping logs of everything that you're doing consignments on. I also recommend having updates that are established prior to any agreement. You want to know monthly, bi-monthly, uh, quarterly, you know, what's the status of the books we provided? What did they sell for? What's the current situation? I have heard some horror stories where, yeah, a collection was provided so that they could take on the consignment, but they just didn't get to it. Six months go by. What's going on? We could have done something by now. And there's frustrated people now as a result. So you want to be up on the agreement right up front. Deal with someone that has good uh, a good track record. Get some referrals. But consignment is another route to go. But if you want to put some work in, well, there's always the convention scene as an option. This is like the OG way, man. This is what I did growing up with my dad, you know, on a, on a Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday morning, getting irritated as hell, him waking me up, Tom, I need you to move 20 long boxes, help me. My back hurts. And we're lugging comic long boxes from the barn, clear to the driveway. I'm sweating. I'm a kid. My fingers hurt because of the, you know, the... The BCW boxes, the old ones are pretty nice on your hands, but the newer ones are like a jagged edge and you're just like basically cutting your hands up, your manos, and going to like not just a comic convention. I'm talking like malls, going to swap meets, setting up in areas with other retailers and, and, and individuals who sell things alike, not always just comic books, and bringing your price books and hoping for the best. And a lot of the times having some success because comic book peeps are willing to hunt. They're willing to travel. Yeah. I mean, look, if you're going to put that time in and you're going to spend the time to price stuff out, grade it, learn a little bit about the hobby, this is a great way to go because you don't just bulk out your material now. Okay. You're selling things individually. You'll get more money individually versus bulk. Now, the other convention thing we should talk about outside of just setting up either a big show, small show, swap, whatever is convenient for you. Granted, it is a lot of work, guys. 
Oh, it it's a, a lot of work. It's tiring, man. You're getting up early. You're prep. You're preparing, but it's a fun time, man. I enjoy it. Yeah, we enjoy it. Does the person enjoy it? I don't know, but it's going to be a huge learning experience, and you're going to really get a feel for it, and that's that's majorly important. But there's also taking your collection and trying to sell it on a con floor at a big show to dealers, which I find, and I've seen a lot of success for people doing this, and for a very important reason, again, like last week, it's the FOMO factor. When you have dealers competing against other dealers on a show floor for a collection, it's like a pissing match between some of them. It really is. Again, it's they kind want of it, man. childlike. Yeah, it's like, I won this convention. Boom. And you will get some pretty solid money. And usually you can get it cash because people come with cash there. They're huge dealers, so they're able to pay more than a local college comic shop who's struggling potentially spending money on trying to get new books every week. Okay, so I find that to be, if you're organized enough or you even have the books in a truck in the parking lot, ready to go. And because and if it's on a con floor, that's like, great. They can sell that stuff immediately. You can go to booth to booth. You and know? recoup money, right. If you just have several keys you want to sell, you can shop the entire floor. I've seen you legit buy something and be able to like throw it up on the wall because it's like, you know what? You just sold this key book and you want it. You want a book like that on your wall because it brings people to your booth. You don't even necessarily need to move that book right then and there. But it's a good wall book, you know? You're, you're adding inventory that's being, you know, constantly replaced. And on a Sunday, you may want to have some nice books to throw up there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I could have a pretty wall, right? But anything on my walls that are to sell, so I have prices on them. Of course, sell. of course, of course. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I'm just telling you, I think the best, one of the best places on for, like, in person will be at a big con competing against other dealers who I'm telling you, man, they get to this brag rights for the weekend. Like, oh yeah. Look what I got. Look, look, look who won boys. Next you know. one on the list here. eBay. eBay. I mean, for real though, it's the most utilized auction platform. It's where so many prices are based off of. And the reason is, is because it's simple. It's time consuming. You know, at times it's frustrating you're going to be held accountable, uh, accountable, accountable, accountable for um, a, a bunch of different things that honestly it's a good experience to be accountable for. You're going to be um, held to a high standard for shipping, uh, shipping things on time quickly. You're going to be uh, worried about feedback because with bad feedback doesn't just come poor public perception. They will hold your money. They'll start tying things up, making it difficult for you to move the comic books because they want people who are dealing with things in the right way. I happen to know, based off of my inner circle, eBay doesn't think very highly of comic books. Did you know that? I did not know that. I've heard through the grapevine that in you know eBay conversations with some businesses that eBay is frustrated with the comic book activity because they sell a lot. This is just one type of collectible in the grand scheme of things that eBay provides. There's a lot of trouble that comes with comics because of all of the difficulties that comes with selling comics, taking multiple pictures and having to be super transparent. And this book looks like a reprint, but it's not a reprint. Oh wait, it is a reprint. And this was shipped poorly. And now there's money being, um, tied up because of mistakes and and it was shipped wrong and then you have uh just in general comics are a strange collectible in that it's too big to ship cheaply but it's small enough that you feel like you're always overpaying to ship it that is a hundred ten percent true about the shipping i can't believe how much it costs to ship a comic because the size like you said is just enough for it to be too obtrusive in a certain format of mailing, but just right enough to where you're just like, God, I'm really paying that much to ship this flat little freaking comic book. It's so annoying. Like I said, eBay, huge audience. Obviously a huge audience. Very competitive out there, but a lot of things to think about because like you said, you got to deal with issues. You got to deal with personalities that you don't know who these people are on the other end of their keyboard and you have to know what you're doing. Because if you're grading a comic and you're telling them it's this grade, then, and they disagree, 
then you're going to get some negative feedback and you're going to waste all this time, potentially lose all this money and piss off people and damage your account. So there are risks with eBay. I'm not saying it's not possible. People do it every freaking day. All right. Thousands and thousands of people do it. You can do it. It's a lot of work. It's doable. You can do it from your home. Do it at your leisure. Do it at your own time frame. So it works for certain people that way. eBay has options to obviously sell things as a buy it now. Best offers, which we've even touched on today. You also have the ability to do auctions. And if you're willing to risk something selling for lower than what you feel like market value should be, you have that ability to do that. However, the thing with eBay is there's a, uh, a balance of quantity of what you're trying to sell and how fast you move it. Because every month you're dealing with fees. And fees means that your books that you're trying to sell are actually selling for less because of how long they take to move. So you have to be on your pricing. And if you have a ton of listings, that's a lot of price adjustments. You're just adding time on top of time that you're spending to try to get top dollar for something that also may not sell or it may sell for very little. So the trick to eBay that I have found as far as seeing success in the community is doing it often. When what I mean by doing, I mean listing often and also going all in on a type of selling. If you're doing auctions, it's better to do a lot of auctions often than just one auction on occasion. If you're looking to sell a particular type of book, it's better to have um, the quickness of selling similar types of books than to have to take the time to price grade. Oh, this is a dollar listing a dollar book. Oh, this one's a hundred dollar book. And then, all right, and spending the time to list that one. It's a lot quicker to do things that are more within the same genre, the same type of collectible, and then in the same style of selling. For example, I actually have an eBay page. We do weekly 10 day auctions. And I would say 95% of the inventory on my eBay page are just auctions. And they're not just any type of auction. There are auctions for modern books on average or graded books on average in very fine near mint or better condition. That way, when the raw book sells, it's high grade. It's very easy to sell it. I don't have to take 10 pictures of a book because if I'm saying this book is near mint, that book is near mint. There's not a whole lot of, you know, 10 pictures per item and then uploading 10 pictures. And then when that image gets uploaded to eBay and it comes in horizontal, you got to click the button to make it go vertical again. So it displays, right? Like I have streamlined a way so that I'm dealing with a very particular type of collectible because I sell comics in different ways. And we'll get into some other ways here in a second. But I encourage you to go all in on whatever way that you feel like is the easiest way for you to stay consistent because consistency is the biggest part of this. You got to just do it often within your uh, time allowance that you're giving yourself. Looking at this next one on the list, we have auction houses. All right. Now this one right here is going to be like, if you have a big book, you're either going to go on eBay or you're looking for a better way to move it. And if you're not looking to shop it between stores and you don't have a dealer network, where can you take your big key book? And I'm talking grails, man. I'm talking books you don't see every day. You got to get this in front of a, a, a buyer, the right buying pool. Let's just say you have great books. Okay. You know, you have great books. Auction house, like you mentioned, is a really solid option if you don't know how to sell to people in a circle that you of other collectors. Okay, if you don't have that circle, you just quietly collect, you don't have friends who want the same books as you do, and you don't want to sell it privately like that, or you're not even sure what the price is because you have a rare book and you want to see what it hits at an auction, auction house is the way to go. Okay, you have heritage auctions, which is a beautiful, amazing auction house. All right, you have Comic Link, or all right, who sell? Who's another auction house? Comic Connect, another comic auction house. Those are probably the top three right now. So really good options for that, and you can actually negotiate your commissions when you have good quality stuff. So keep that in mind. If you have really good books, right, you're doing them a favor by making their auction look better against these other competitors, and there's value to that. So feel free to at least try to negotiate. And I think you can, for a lot of people, it's very doable, all right? And every little percentage goes a long way. 
And it, you got to ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. You can always email these companies, especially if you have a question, you have examples of books. It will go a long way. And then they can point you in the right direction or maybe even give you a recommendation. Last on this list is social media. And this one's a fun one because we were chatting about, you know, about this like three years ago about how exciting these platforms have been um, evolving, you know, how, like what they've become. And we're talking about in particular today, Facebook and Instagram. And Facebook has grown a lot because there is a, uh, it's just an incredible amount of individuals joining groups in the in in the fandom, whether it be Marvel Comics only groups, DC Comics, indie comics, foreign comics, or buy sell trade groups, and that is where the most success is being garnered on the on social as it pertains to Facebook. You join a group by just searching, getting a recommendation from someone else in the community, and these groups have different rules guidelines. You got to know those rules. You play by their rules, but also it keeps the community interesting. Some of these groups have, uh, you know, rules in place of like how often you can sell. Some of them don't. Some have rules in place of like what type of thing you can sell that particular day. Graded comics only, auctions only, claim sales only. Some it's just a free for all. He's got to find the right one. But this year, especially more than others, is the first time we're seeing as much activity because of COVID. This has actually been the saving grace, in my opinion, of many comic book stores across the country because they've realized if we can't get comic, um, comic peeps in to you know, get our merchandise, we got to come to them. And where are they going? Oh, this is where they've been. This is where they're, where, where they're going and where they've been for quite some time. And then you have IG, Instagram, which obviously it's very simple to sell comic books on there. Aside from having a marketplace embedded into your profile, you could also build a group, a network of individuals who want to buy from you or do what we do on your Instagram every single month. I don't get to use Facebook that often. It's just not a platform that I've become comfortable with, but I know a lot of successes on Facebook. A lot of right. people have a great success on there. When you start doing social media route, it's put you putting yourself out there more publicly. Okay, and sometimes that's uncomfortable for people. And there's the people who have no problem being in front of a camera. So for us, we've established enough of a following. And so we have that traction. And so we go live on a camera once a month and sell our stuff. And that works great for us. But we're not the only ones. It's a very common thing to do. And no matter how many people you have on Instagram specifically, you can build a quick, quick base of people who are interested in comic books. And it's a great environment out there. I mean, super positive. There's a lot of great people there that I trust. Very rarely do I see any type of shady activity from anybody. Right. So it's very, it feels like a very accountable area. And people are looking out for other people's backs. So between the two platforms, since I only really use IG, I, I lean very heavily on that. And I recommend members do that. I, I don't think they should do all of them. I think that if you have the time to do more than one, by all means, but it's better to figure out which one works for you the best and go all in on that and serve that community. It'll be more than enough. Yeah. And so for, like you mentioned, so for, um, because I recognize that it's not easy to sell, like once a week on Sundays, um, I offer my platform free so people can sell their stuff. Golden Age Guru on IG. Okay. Because I just, it, the more people who can sell their books and move those to other people in the community, you, you really get to meet so many amazing people who are just like you hanging out. That's what they're doing. They're in their house buying and selling comics just like you are or just buying comics. And so when you have this, this community that you can build and network, you're really going to grow your collection. You're going to be able to unload your collection and you're going to make everybody happy because they're now adding a book that they've been looking for. So try to find out the social media route if you can, because it is a lot of fun because you meet people and you actually do become friends with some of these people. And then all the other ones are great options. So there's some of the top, I think, six, right? We went all through all of them, yeah, right? Yeah, six of them, but you know, there's like a couple of subcategories in there. But there's like six solid ways that someone could you know, take a look at, spend some time, go through the process of selling something. And then seeing how you feel about it, because if you got a collection, you got a lot of comics, you're going to be doing that a lot. So the funnest route is going to be the best route because you're going to spend a lot of time on it. 
wise words, man.